So this is my library, right? And so this is my, my personal stuff. Down here are group libraries. So if you're doing a capstone and you're working with your partner, you should be using group libraries, right? Or, or, you're, or working with your job or you're, you're um, working with me on an independent research project, you know, something like that. We'd use a group, group library so we can all see them. The only thing I'll just note is that um, I have discovered some problems with some of the functionality. So for example, Research Rabbit doesn't play well with the group libraries. So if you're gonna use the Research Rabbit functionality and that kind of stuff, I would use a, your own personal private library, and then after you get the stuff out, then transfer it from that you know, manually into the, the thing. Okay, so I have all these different, different things um, and, and whatever. Um, so uh, here are my, and, and so there's, there's two basic flavors you can do. You can manually enter the references, or we can go to our library or Research Rabbit or whatever the source is, find the reference, get it, and then import it into here, right? There's a extension, right? Yes. Yeah, for like Chrome or... That's right. That's right. So there are also plugins to your browser to, to, to streamline this and make it, make it go more smoothly. But it's the same basic idea. It's either you manually enter it or you're getting the stuff from a... Um, a, a source, and so let me show you. Let's let's look. Okay, so when I get, so if the automatic version, right? So the automatic version now, bibliographic software is not new. We've you know we've had this software for decades now. Essentially, how you should view this as it is a database. So this is going to organize my stuff, right? Again, I I want everybody to use one of these. Zotero is a default, but you have to use something. Uh, just like we were talking about a, a minute ago, it, the first little bit takes a while to learn, and it's going to take a few minutes or an hour or two. To, but once you've figured it out, it's going to go way, way faster, and you're going to save hours and hours and hours and weeks and months of your life. Okay, so for example, this is, um, an ex and there, there's various formats. Um, if you just had to pick one, I would say, if it says something like Zotero or whatever your program, you can just go ahead and pick that. But um, the default one is .ris. Reference Information Systems, I think is what it stands for. And so that's a standard format. So if I look at this, it all it is is a text file. It has a fancy extension, but all it is is a text file. And it has all the information that we're talking about organized by different agreed upon tags. And so um, this one is the type of, of, of source. So this is coming from a journal, okay? Uh, this and then this is the author, and so this person, this person is A. Thompson. Yeah, the next person has a first name, Noah, middle initial J, and then last name. Right. So I, I just show you this because not all there's always there's there's a high likelihood there's going to be something you have to tweak and fix with these things, even if you automatically import them. Right. Even if you automatically import, them. there's no free lunch. There's always there's always professionalism, always we gotta be inspecting, and, and sometimes we don't discover this until we generate the literature cited, and we look how, it, look how it's formatted before we submit it, and you're like, oh my God, there's no page numbers on there, or oh my God, uh, it doesn't have the journal name in there, or something, right? And that's okay, you, it's not that you did something wrong, it's just you probably imported something, you didn't have it, but it is up to you, to before you submit that to me or your boss, to go back and, when you find those errors, go back and fix the original, Entry in the database, and then it'll pour it out, and then refresh your paper, and it'll go, it'll go well. Okay, so let's look at this. So this guy has a bunch of authors, and one of the things I notice is this guy a first name a, and then we put a period after it. So some some journals do that, but then check out this guy, this guy here. His middle initial, it's just a J with no period. Again, that's the kind of inconsistency we'll see. Even this is from the same journal. So you're gonna to wanna to double check those and probably have to go back in and, and do a little tweaking, maybe add a period or, or, or what have you, right? Okay, and then the rest of it is just you know page numbers and the year it was published and everything. Um, if there is a link, there, there, it, it, you know, we have a link here and just all various stuff. At a minimum, at a minimum, what you should be putting in is, the, is all the information about the source, author, uh, you know, publication, that kind of stuff, and the abstract, or if it's a report, I would paste into the abstract area the summary or the executive summary, 
right? That way, when you go back, you know, in the future and go back to look at it, you can you still have that core stuff, okay? If that all fails, uh, or sorry, no, let me say. And then, in addition, my strong recommendation is that you put the PDF, you put the you put the source article in there too. That way, it's all together in one spot, and you always have it on demand. You don't have to go back to the library and go hunt it down and 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 what have you. The only issue with that might be um, is if you were paying for cloud storage, then you got to keep paying for cloud storage, right? Or 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 download it eventually and just have it on your desktop. But but I think the advantages greatly outweigh. Um, the disadvantages. Okay, so let's, let's, so let's look over here. Okay, so he okay, so what do we want to look for? We want to look for um, manta rays or something like that. <laughs> Related to tourism. So I click this. I'm gonna again. I'm gonna skim this. I'm gonna read through. Hey, if this seems like it might be interesting, so I haven't read the whole paper yet, but it's, maybe it's interesting. Okay, so maybe I want to grab this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to. Uh, Export and notice we have all these different options, right? Do 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 do. So I'm going to pick um, uh, R I S, and it's going to. And now this is going to vary based on the database, but in this case, I want to I want to pick the most inclusive version. It oftentimes does not default to the most inclusive. Uh, ex excuse me, I should say expansive version. So if I click on this, it says, ooh, author, title, source, and abstract. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to want that. So I click that. Then I say export. And then it's going to say, I'm going to put it somewhere. So I'm going to put it in here and I say Manta refs or something. And I'm going to boom. Now, again, I could be, I could, I could have done this and I could have saved seven references and then bring them all in at once, but just for the purpose of you, I'm just, you guys, I'm just showing you one. Okay. So now I got that sucker saved. I also, though, probably want the paper, right? So in this case, I'm like, hey, where's the paper? Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. So here's the thing. So I'll then go and, you know, again, we're going to read, read through the whole thing and make sure it makes sense. But let's say we did that and we said, yes, we want this. So then I, I'm going to grab that. So now I have it in my browser and I'm going to save as, or save as, yeah. I'm going to save it in the same, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but here's a quick one, right? So I, ha I have now the PDF saved as a file. I have the, the description of the reference saved as a file. And so I'm going to come over to here and let's say, this is not this one, I'll have to delete it later, but that's fine. I'll put it in this. I go to file and I go to import and I'm going to say, um, uh, that this is gonna. This is the default one that it, it it's got a, a radio button. So I'm gonna say, yeah, I want to do that. And it's gonna say, where is it? I'm gonna go to my file. I'm gonna go in here, and I'm first gonna grab the RIS file, and say, yeah, do that. Boom. And then I'm gonna unclick this because I don't want to have it in a separate thing. It could be helpful, but I don't want to create another file structure. And and if you guys do not pay for cloud storage and you just have your own file, I would move, you can move these into that file and just point to it. But in my case, I'm going to copy it because I pay for the cloud storage. So I'm going to say continue and it's going to do some stuff. Think. And then here's the, here's the paper, right? So it already knows what it is, right? It already knows Oh, I think it's because I, I have everything zoomed in, so you can't, because um, I have it magnified, you, it looks a little bit off. But basically, so here, it's a journal art, it's a journal type of reference. It is the title, you know, da, 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 da. My abstract is in here, et cetera. So now that I have it in there, now I want to make sure I, and if we look right here, check it out, it's one line. Can you guys see this? It's one line, and there's nothing else that shows up. These other ones, like this guy, there's a funky triangle. When I click that, I open up, I see there's things associated with that. So now I'm gonna do that by, by associating my PDF with this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna right click on this and I'm going to say, um, well, we could, you can always first try this, which is find, so if it's an open source thing and it's on the web, I can say do that and it'll go through and it'll see if it can automatically suck the references in. And then it said, no, I don't, yeah, so shocker, it's not, there isn't one, but you can always try that. Okay, so then I have to say, okay, I have to add it myself. So I'm going to right click on that again. I'm going to add attachment. And I'm going to add stored copy of file. 
And then, so I go back to that same folder and I pick the PDF and I go boo boo. And then now notice I have a funky triangle here. And when I click that open, now in addition to the reference, I have another thing that's here, okay? Now, if I want to add my own notes, so this is my capstone project and there's some really important things here I want to, to comment on, I can go to notes and I can say, whatever, this is a, a or um, I should use, I should use these methods. Uh, they used five parts per thousand die or whatever, right? Anything I want to highlight, right? Blah, 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 and say, okay. Now have a look. Now when I come up here and I open it, there's both the PDF and there's my notes. So every new thing I add, it gets another file, but it's all together and it's, uh, it's all together. Another one that's really useful for you guys, I think you should think about, is this tags one. So right now, there's no tags. But as I start to add them, these tags are starting to show up. So if this one was maybe um, methods, right? Okay, cool. And maybe one is um, uh, Brazil, right? So now later on when I start doing that, if I come back to find when I start to have many references, like which is the one about Brazil? Boom. And now maybe Brazil is in the title, so maybe we catch it that way, but this assures me that it's there. And now when I add another paper and I go to this one, um, I, I can start to add other ones. Like when I start to type Brazil, it pops up. So I don't have to type it every single time and it'll use the same spelling. So tags are also really uh, useful as well. Okay, so that is, so that is how, I, uh, how I import a reference. And then I can, also, um, I can also do it manually. So that's the one where I come up to this bad boy and click this guy. And these will be the most recent ones I've used but there's always a ton. So here are all the different options I can pick from, right? So, I, so maybe it was a, a conference paper or maybe it was a book, meaning the whole book, or maybe it was a chapter in a book, which is a common thing that you'll, you guys will see. So that would be book section, right? And they're all slightly different. They all have, they all have uh, you know, so, so when I do a journal, you don't usually have the editor. When I have a book, you usually cite the editor. So as I pick these different um, uh, types of entries, it'll automatically give me the list of things, right? And so if I say I'm doing a new, I'm doing a new um, whatever journal article, it's going to show up over here, and I can start to manually type this is the da -da -da -da, right. And I can I can copy and paste all that stuff in manually if it doesn't work right. So you can always do the manual one. If, if stuff fails, you can always do that. And I would say this is most useful for the type of stuff you guys will be writing for our class for the news type of stuff. So there's a really great article. It's not one of your foundational core peer review references, but it's a really good example of one of the challenges, say, with Manta Tourism. So I want to cite it. A lot of times those newspaper articles, they don't import well. Even if you use the plugins, they don't seem to work right. So those would be an example. Hey, I'm going to go here and type the author of the, you know, the publication is the New York Times. The author is blah, blah, blah. It's on page A1 or whatever the hell, right? Okay, cool. So does that make sense? All right. So um, uh, have you guys been having any pro, have you guys been trying to use Zotero and had some problems? Okay. So then let me show you the last little bit here, which is, Let's say I'm writing my paper, okay? Okay, so here's my paper. So now I want to insert my reference, okay? So now I'm using Word. You can use Word if you want. You can use, you can use um, Google Docs. If you have your own computer, my recommendation is use Word and use the desktop version. These things all work with the cloud. They all work with Google Docs and everything. But I, I just find it, it seems to work more reliably with these things. But, but again, this works, there's different workarounds for different platforms and stuff. And so what I've done here is I've gone to Zotero and I've already added in my plugin for Word. So have a, so have a look. I have an actual thing here that says Zotero in my, my Word. In this case, I'm using Word on my Mac. But the same thing would be if you're on the PC or whatever. Cool? So I've already done that first, A. B, 
I've opened my, my library. So this, let's say this is the library I want to use for citing. So I've opened that. So I have my, my word processor opened. I have my document opened. Okay, and I've said a bunch of stuff. So to be clear, and I've seen this a little bit, you guys do not write a sentence and then add a reference. The reference is before the end of the sentence. So I do not put my cursor here. I put it just inside the period, just inside the end of the sentence. Okay, so I get it where I want, and this is my statement, and I want to, and this is a blah, blah, blahs thing. So then I come up here and I, and I, I activate my Zotero, and I say add a citation, and it's going to say, since this is the first one, when we use ecology, ecological monographs, yeah, okay, cool. And then it's going to open up my, um, my library, and it's going to give me this, this dialog bar, and I can, either, I can either start typing, so, oops, put the cursor here, MC, and it'll start to populate. Oh, McKay, blah, 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 whoever, yeah, whatever. Uh, sure, let's say it's this one. Okay, and then I hit return. And now McDonald is, is here, right? Um, I'll show you one other one. So if I, said, if I said a bunch of stuff, blah, 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 and then McDonald et al. found that this wasn't true or something like that, right? So, so now I've, I've said the author's name and I still want to reference it because I need to reference it. But watch, if I come up here and do the same thing at all, so after wherever it was in the sentence, and I come back to my, uh, I come up here, add it in, and I go up here and I do Mac, McDonald, I hit return, it adds the whole thing. So it says McDonald et al, McDonald et al 2009, which is not right, right? I mean, the information is correct, but it's not formatted correctly. What I can always do is after I've inserted, I can come back here, click this, and notice it says add a citation or add edit a citation. So now I, I'm, I've selected, I know I've selected because it's gotten gray, if I can see how it's grayed here. And now I hit that again, and it pops back up. But instead of just hitting return, which it'll, and, I, and it, it goes without noting, I could, I could have several different references here. I could have like three or four here and hit return. It'll all put them together in one, one parenthetical thing. But if, but if my issue is here is, okay, so I wanted to say McDonald, but I don't want to say the, the name. I just want the year, right? So now I can click on here and notice I can say a, a prefix or suffix. All right, let me, yeah, so first let me do, let me show you an example of a prefix. So maybe I can say something like E-G, right? Like for, ex for example, it's this. This isn't maybe the best, this isn't maybe a foundational reference, but this is an example of that. And then I come up here, and now look, now, now it says E-G. And I can add, do the same thing if I wanted to add a suffix on there. Take that out. Um, okay. Okay, so now the last one, I come back up to here, add edit citation, right? I come up here, check out this, omit author. So if I tick this dude, and then again say, okay, now it has it just as 2009. And even if I didn't list McDonald at all elsewhere, this will properly be referenced in the, in the, at the end of the, um, of the thing, right? And so then I can do this. Well, sorry. I should do this at the end. If I, if I hit this thing, all the references will show up in here, right? So they'll all be alphabetical, et cetera. And I can change the format of these. And, all I can, and as, I, as I look at this, I'm looking at, let me unclick off of this. Uh, I look at this and um, if I notice there's something here, so maybe this person's name is spelled out, maybe it's J-O-H-N. Then all I would do is I'd go back to my Zotero, edit it in the actual uh, uh, database, the original source of it. In other words, I wouldn't type it into here on my paper. I would go back to here and go back to wherever the hell it is. Sorry. I'd go back to, go back to whatever this dude is, and I would edit it in here, 
and then I would refresh or re-update the bibliography or, or the things, and it would be all updated. Cool? So this is a great example right here of, like, check this out. So he, like, all this stuff looks pretty good. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, but look, this guy, this journal is estimating survival and life stage. Of, right? It's all in capital letters. So I'd want to go in and edit that so that I put a lowercase s, t, i, m, so that it, it is consistent when, I, when it gets inserted and it doesn't look weird and out of, out of place. 